Well, I've been hearing a lot of Christians lately making a certain comment that something big is coming, you know, and they really emphasize that something big is coming. Is that true? Is that, or is that just, you know, kind of that whole fanatical spirit that we can get caught up? Well, I believe it is true. I do. I believe it's true. In my spirit, I sense that something big is coming. And you think about uh, 911, you know, September the 11th, 2001, which literally shook the whole world. And then even recently, this global pandemic that has shaken the world, has changed the entire world. And, you know, those were big events. And, you know, and yes, I do believe that something big is approaching. Something big is on the horizon. What it is, I don't know. When it is, I don't know. Where it's going to take place, I don't know. But I do sense in my spirit that there's something coming that is going to shake even greater than anything former than this world has experienced. Something that is going to be so horrendous, so global, that it's going to cause this entire world to be affected more than anything else that we have ever experienced. I believe there's a coming storm of a magnitude that none of us have ever experienced, and it's going to bring such fear and panic in the entire world. What it is, we don't know, but it's, gonna, it's going to certainly come, and I believe it's going to come suddenly. I believe it's going to come overnight. And uh, just a few nights ago, as I was sleeping in bed, at around 2 o'clock in the morning, I was sound asleep, and out of nowhere, this huge thunderstorm came rolling in right over our city, and it felt like it was right over top of our house, and the thunder that, that came forth from that storm, I'm not exaggerating, because I've asked other people in our city, did you feel that? Did you sense it? Did it happen to you? And they all said, yes. What am I talking about? A thunderstorm that literally shook the walls of our house. I have never experienced that before. Literally shook the walls. I was laying in bed and the walls were literally shaking. And I thought, what is happening? And this thunderstorm did not just quickly roll through. It lasted for a long time. It lasted for hours. This, this great thunder, this great lightning, this great power, the power of the storm. And I see that because I believe that that was just kind of like a sign to me that this storm that is coming is going to have such a power in it, and it's going to shake the world. And you know, that does not bring any fear in me whatsoever. I'm not, I'm not panicking. I'm not scared at all. Because my faith is in Jesus, glory to God. My security is in Him, hallelujah. He is my protection. He is my shield, glory to God. He is my shield around me from all the onslaught of the enemy, it doesn't matter what disasters we're going to face. It doesn't matter what kind of spiritual warfare we're going to be engaged in. Jesus is our protection. Yes, he is. He said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the very end of the world. That is our protector, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So I don't fear anything that's going to come. And I want to share with you in Matthew chapter 7 what Jesus gave us um, a, a, a revealing of what our protection and our victory will be in the coming storm. So we are not going to be defeated as the church in the coming storm. We're not going down. Hallelujah. We are going up church. We're going up. We're, we're going to rise up in victory. We're going to rise up in power. We're going to rise up in the authority that God has entrusted to us. Praise God. And this is what Jesus said in Matthew 7 verses 24 to 27, speaking about a storm. He said, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Verse 25, and listen to this. Here's the storm. He describes the storm. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall. Why? Because it was founded on the rock. Well, guess what the rock is? Well, you're going to say, well, it's Jesus. Well, yeah. Yeah, of course it's Christ. But no, Christ wasn't talking about him as the rock in this particular uh, passage. He was referring to the Word of God. Jesus was re referring to the Word of God as the rock, but not just the Word, but those who do His Word, those who obey His Word, those who follow His Word, those who activate His Word in their life. That's what He was referring to, because He said that right at the very beginning, whoever hears these things of mine and does them. 
will be a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Verse 26, but everybody who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Not on a rock, on the sand. Now this house that the, that the foolish man built looked identical to the house that the wise man built. It looked wonderful, you know, from all appearance. Wow, what a magnificent house. Isn't this amazing? It's beautiful. It's what a structure. Wow. But Christ said it was built on the sand. And let me tell you something right now. Every ministry, every work for the Lord, every church that is built on sand, it might look impressive, it might last for a little while, but a coming storm is going to bring it down and it's going to reveal that it did not have a foundation. It was not built upon following and obeying the word of God. It's going to be revealed. It's going to be exposed by the coming storm. This coming storm, as much disaster as it may bring to the world, is going to expose the, the, the faulty, phony foundation of the church, of every ministry, of every pastor, every, every leader, every evangelist, every prophet, you name it. You name it. Whatever is being done in the name of Christ is going to be revealed. That which is built upon the rock is going to withstand the storm. Hallelujah. We may lose a few windows. We may lose a few shingles on the roof. We, we may have a little bit of damage, but we're going to be secure, glory to God, because we have wisely built our house, our ministry, our marriage, our family, our finances. Everything is being built on the rock, which is the word of God and obeying the word of God. So that's why I do not fear the coming storm. Let it come. Let it rage. Let it roll through. Let it, you know, be what it's going to be. And I will not fear, and neither will you, because our foundation is secure. Glory to God. But the foolish man who built his house on the sand, look at what Jesus says about him. Same thing. The rain descended, the same storm, the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, the same storm, identical storm, and beat on that house, and it fell. It fell. It collapsed like a house of cards. The whole thing came down. It was so impressive. It looked like totally invulnerable to anything. It looked like it could withstand anything, even an earthquake. But it had no foundation, and that storm brought it down. The same storm that came against the house of the wise man, that house stood firm, glory to God. But the foolish man's house came down like that. And Jesus says, and great was its fall. Great was its fall. Now listen to me. This is very, very important for you and I right now on the verge of a coming storm. We need to begin to declare with our mouth, with our words, in faith, what the Word of God says. Not what man says, not what, you know, the daily breaking news says, not what unbelievers say. We need to declare what the Word of the Lord says. And the Word of the Lord says this in Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Let's say it again. Psalm 46, verse 1. God, you are my refuge and my strength. You are my very present help in trouble. You are my present help in the coming storm. Now listen. David writes, God is our present help. He was our past help. He will be our future help. But he is our present help. Glory to God. You can call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Call upon the name of the Lord in your day of trouble. And he is a very present help. So whatever that coming storm is going to bring, however it's going to play out, fear not. Fear not. Why? Because God is your refuge and your strength. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. He is our refuge 
in the coming storm. And we're not going to hide away in fear and panic and, you know, oh no, oh no, woe is me, what's going to happen? No, that's not the spirit of fear that's going to grip the church of Jesus Christ that is walking in overcoming power and authority. He is our tower, he is our refuge where we can hide and then, and then we can withstand that storm, glory to God. And when that storm has done its work, we come out in victory. We come out in glory. We come out in the presence of Almighty God. We come out to, to, to be a blessing to, this, to the people of the world that have been shaken, the people of the world that have lost hope and lost everything. And the church is there to, to minister to them in power, in love, in grace, in mercy, and in the presence of God. Hallelujah. That's when we're going to begin to see the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that are going to confirm the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't need miracles and signs and wonders when everything's going well. You need them when things are not well, so that God can be glorified, so that God can be magnified and lifted up, and his church is going to be a force on this earth at that time. Hallelujah. So, Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, again for your people. Lord, I pray that we will lay hold of your word, God, during this season of storm. I pray, God, that we will not fear. We will not give in to fear, Lord. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. We have power. We have spiritual power. We have authority over the storm. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord, today, God, that no matter what may come, God, we are safe and secure from all alarm, leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. So, Lord, I pray a blessing over your people today. I pray, God, that we would rise up in this occasion. God, that we would be the people of God. Hallelujah. That we would walk in unity. We would walk in love. We would walk in one accord. Lord, that we would live our lives, Father, as the church on earth. God, that we would not be divided. Lord, that we would not allow strife or envy. We would not allow discord to come into the body of Christ. Because, God, your word says that by this shall all men know that you are my people. You follow me because of the love that you have one towards another. And, God, so be it, we pray. Let your love permeate in the body of Christ in this generation, in this very hour. <clears throat> Father, so that we can be joined together as one body. And, Lord, we can fulfill the law of Christ in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. God bless you, and thank you again for tuning in. This is Pastor Mike. Bye-bye for now.